11 years ago, I visited a strange, chaotic workshop in Los Angeles. The cars inside blew my mind. The singer legend had been born. Things are different now. Blimey, it's a bit different. Every Porsche 911 reimagined by Singer starts with an owner sending their 964 generation car to Singer. The car is disassembled and then restored around its chassis and engine block in collaboration with the owner. The building may be bigger, but the hat remains. Here's Rob to talk us around the turbo. This is it, this is the latest car. I have to say, if any car lends itself to the Singer treatment, it's the turbo, isn't it? Because <laughs> it's, got, it's got the arches, it's already got the width, and yeah. now you can exaggerate that. Yeah. Talk me through it. Well, uh, the 930 turbo, I mean, for, for our generation, Chris, perhaps the pin-up air-cooled 911. I had one on my wall. I loved the idea of it, it Porsche's first supercar. And we wanted to, tr to try and, to, you know, respectfully and sincerely and authentically bring it into the into the new world with a bit more performance and fixing a few things but as usual trying to retain the essence of what made the 930 so special it had a lot to do with width it had a lot to do with turbo lag and it had a lot to do with all sorts of things back in the day um, and we've tried to give the car a comfortable stance and have it sitting comfortably on its wheels without too much effort there's something about the wider axles of the turbo that mean that it looks more contemporary than a, a 3.2 Carrera looks like quite an old car. Yep, yep. But a, nine, a, a later G50 box, particularly 89 turbo, to me, doesn't look that old. No. Do you know what I mean? Because no. the, the wheels really fill the arches, don't they? You've now got a bigger front arch to play with. Yes. You know, to, to, to get a car to sit right, it's very helpful to have a little bit of offset on the, on the wheel and have a little bit of wheel barrel. So we've worked hard to define a Fuchs that has a little bit of barrel on the front and the back. Of course, the back is less of an issue. Um, well, I didn't think you could get any more dish on a wheel than that. <laughs> he calls it barrel. It's a great word, barrel. <laughs> you know, it's got to, it's got to look like a turbo because it's a, it's a Porsche turbo, right? And, it, and it, there are things that we need to get right and things we need to, um, you know, press the emotional buttons with and, and get right. And um, there are things that we need to leave well alone. But that car, even though it, it was a, a celebration of an, of an older looking car, there was elements of it that looked factory. That's what you've done with this. Yeah. Okay. So how do you get these finishes? This is your interpretation of the, imp the ironically impact bumper. Yep. How long does it take to get these finishes? We clay modeled this car for two years and we, we obsessed about all sorts of things like the, the, the bumper to body seal. And it was the, the impact bumper. So, the, yeah. so these concertinaed um, on the original cars and gave the, gave the car some parking protection. Rethinking them and bringing them, and making them both an energy absorber and an exit for some heat, because obviously got the turbos down there, seemed like an obvious thing to do to me. And um, the finish is a rubberized paint finish. So, the, so the parts are carbon fiber. You paint fiber. that on? Yes. And it's very protective and it feels like rubber and it allows us to get the kind of- It's got of, a lovely, lovely resistance. You just yeah. touch it, there's a bit of a tackiness to it. Isn't it? Yeah soft touch kind of rubberized paint and that allows us to get the, the gaps. The rubber's much heavier of course and yeah. it shrinks, it makes these these gaps and these tolerances very hard to, to pin down. Does, does this, this excite you as much? Oh yeah, because this is allows us to go bonkers, you know, yeah. and get everything right. What I love about it is I see in, in the cars that you do, I see like all car nerds, there were shapes and surfaces that you saw in the turbo and they were, they were outside in and inside, right. and you've played with them and, bought, and, and added your interpretation to them, but also it's a celebration, it's an homage. And the other one, for me, in this car, you've got these shapes, these are obvious, yep. this is obvious, the seat bolsters. Yeah. The seat bolsters, I can just imagine, when I saw the, the first shot, I was like, I know he spent ages grinning about this. <laughs> well, let's have, there, a, well, let's have a look at the seat bolsters. But bolster. there are so many, if, 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 so if, distinctive. if you think a lot about these cars, there are, there, there are elements of the car that you've just got to, the original sports seats that weren't always fitted to early turbos had this very square section. It was square, wasn't section, it? And they, and they looked, they, they call them tombstone seats, didn't they? They were, very, they were rather straight and stiff on the upper half, but this, this was lovely. So we retained this um, and we wanted to get some, you know, some contemporary Porsche trimming 
this is very much an homage to the to the 1975 turbo seat and also the classic here with the seat that you, you had on it was was your interpretation of a seat it fitted the car perfectly i love the electrical adjusters on this right because that was again that's just pure 80s isn't it it is it is it is and and, and, and why uh, you know those lovely circular uh, buttons with the arrows on the um, way they move yeah lovely they, and they they kind of sprung nicely i mean they're iconic i mean it's an overused word but they there are so many corners of the turbo that that are that are just carved from a, a, a time and a moment in the 70s that have to be celebrated. Right? Yeah. The turbo needed to sit on its wheels a little bit better. Those big wheel arches were making promises that the wheels couldn't keep, I, I think, in, 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 those, in those days. Good phrase. And we've tried to fix that a little bit. The car's much wider than a, than a regular turbo. Um, it's about 30 millimetres wider at the back and 20 at the front. How do you get the proportions so right? I'm, I'm sounding a bit of a sycophant now, but you do. Wheels, we start with the wheels. The main difference between the Classic and, and a Turbo is the Classic's on 17s, the Turbo's on 18s. These are the same wheel and tyre specs as our DLS, the Dynamic Light Weighting Study. So it's got two four fives and two nine fives on the back. So it's a bigger wheel, which allowed us a certain amount of challenges to make the car sit comfortably on the 18 inch wheel but but yes that we're starting with the wheels and tires get the wheels and tires right half the battle and getting them in the right spot and and then dressing them and just creating a surround for the for the wheels is and the tires especially is 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 job number one is that specific to porsche shapes or is it for all shapes all shapes all shapes because these I, do I, look I, like they're melted over the wheels yeah to me. i think most car designers would say that um it starts with the rubber, how the tyre sits on the rim, gives a certain amount of tension to the thing, and then you're uh, you're off to the races. How did you reach this solution to the front end? Again, it's this, if it had been OEM back in the day, this is what it would look like, look. Because it just looks, it looks like it's almost a factory solution. Yeah. But it, but of course it's radically different to, a, yeah. to actually, to the original car, yeah. but somehow it looks like it might have been. How well, do you do that? We have to spend a lot of money developing new lights. Yeah. You can imagine, the, the commitment and the, the cash required to do that, which is pretty unpleasant. I might have had a little go in it already, and I'm going to hopefully have a better go in it quite soon. The character of the car is in keeping with the turbo. It's a bit more GT than out and out sports car. Right. Loads of torque, fewer gear changes, yep. but it's mighty fast. Yeah. It is right. mighty fast. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's got over 500 horsepower and, and about 2,700 pounds. It's going to be bloody fast. Marler have done a great job on the engine management. It's got ABS traction control and ESP from, from Bosch. It's got everything we can do to make it a, a long distance thing that you want to travel with, with a partner maybe, and go, go to fantastic places and have some experiences. The same could be said for the classic as well. It's, it's a little bit more frenetic, a little bit more visceral. And the idea was to turn the volume down a little bit, but 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 not lose the excitement. First time we recorded something about one of your cars, you told a lovely romantic story. It wasn't a story; it was the truth about how you'd got some modelling clay together in a room, and you'd spent ages agonising over wheel arch shapes. Yep. And effectively, like all great ideas, you just had the balls to get on and do it. And what you ended up with was a car that captivated, I think, and really touched a nerve so much so that about 100 people have tried to imitate you since. But that was, that was born out of simplicity and passion. Yeah. I'm not saying that's gone from this at all, it's the same thing. But now you're making something that's a bit more grown up. Are you staggered by how involved the process is and how much you have to do to do this? Because you didn't, at the beginning, you didn't do it with that, did no, you? I mean, but we, with we, this, we, the, the testing. It's incredible. I've managed to relieve myself of some of those duties. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I was touching on. <laughs> The greatest thing that's ever happened is that we've managed to surround us, Maz and I have managed to surround ourselves with people who are actually very good at doing a, a specific jobs, which is something that we weren't very good at back in the early days. We were doing everything. And we weren't very good at doing everything. We were good at, <laughs> we, were good at we, were do, we were good at doing some of the stuff, maybe, but the cars are just benefiting from process and from proper expertise in areas that, where we clearly were not experts in, you know, really hone, honing the dynamics of a car. It's the most complete car we've ever done. I mean, there's a massive amount of, lessons learned in this thing. Part of the reason for coming here was to understand how far companies come. You know, that first little shed yep. with the cars was, was a sort of an assembly point of bits that not everyone knew where they were coming from. It was, lo it was lovely and mad. Yes. 
this feels very grown up to me. I'm like, I've, I've been taken aback today. I didn't realise the scale of it. Mm -hmm. it's, it is pretty awe-inspiring when you see it. You realise how many people want your cars, yeah. which they should do. But it doesn't feel like a car factory. It doesn't feel. Well, that's good it doesn't feel do. too sterile. Good. And I and I still think there's some of that California madness in it. And you realise that it takes an absolute army to do something as ostensibly simple as restoring a beautiful old Porsche 911, and to do it in a way that is repeatable, that retains the the, the wonderful essence of hand-built artisanship, which I think we we've jealously guarded here. If you look at what's going on here, it's the same it's the same kind of commitment that was going on 13, 14 years ago. There's just more of it happening, it's, and it's just happening in a more organised way. And it's the testament to Maz and Jason Franklin, our COO, that, that we've managed to, 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 to make sense of an idea that we knew was a strong idea, but we certainly didn't think it would turn into this, which is what I'm asked most often. It's got to be as close to perfect as possible, and I've started using the perfect word when I've... When, because the I, I, word. Yeah, it's a horrible word. That's what we're chasing, and I've always said, no, nothing... And, and the cars are not perfect. There's no way they are. Nothing is, and you don't want it to be, but everything really is important, and we've got to keep an eye on everything, and, and the stuff that makes people go to bed sleeping well and thinking about their car is the shit that we love, right? It's the finishes and the, the way parts come together. I mean, this is this joy in, in, in innocent little moments like that, how a door closes and, yeah. and the trim and the wheels and how the tires look. And, and this is the stuff that, that inspired me. Now we have the ability to really chase all the other stuff, which is beautiful engineering underneath the car proper parts that go together beautifully that have been engineered by people who really know what they're doing and of course the car benefiting as a result in terms of not just how the car feels and how the car is going to endure but how the car goes down the road which is which is uh, which is the main thing singer's services are based on co-creation singer's team listens to the personalization each owner requires and then restores their classic Porsche 911 accordingly it's a labor of love for everyone if Rob creates the beauty, it's CEO Maz who makes it all happen. It's a bit different to 11 years ago. Yeah, I'd say so. I mean, I don't even know where to begin. I think there were four or five cars in the workshop. And now, can we go to the start where I want to see one of these being flattened and prepped, beautified. Is that right? Body and paint. Let's start there. It gets cleaned up, it goes into here. The, the cars are bodied in carbon fiber, as you know. Yeah. But the magic is really this magnificent set of people who then massage the surface of the car, every millimeter of it. And every single car is hand finished like that? All by hand, it will always be done by hand. And how long does it take for a shell to appear in here and then leave ready for paint? It's about a month prior to this. This takes about almost two months, uh, and then it goes into paint. And that's because... Sorry, let me stop you. So there's three months to get it to the paint shop. It just can't be automated. Cars oh. aren't, are, they're, they're not perfect down to, the, down to the half millimeter, but we perfect them before yeah. they get painted. Look at these surfaces. To get a four millimeter gap on every car. And, and how do they measure that? Is there a tool? There's a tool, there's a measurement tool. Four millimeters on every car all the time. And it's done by hand to make it perfect every time. Is everyone slightly different? I suppose they are, aren't they? Yeah, of course. And what's nice is it's, there's a human being in every one of these, yeah. right? They've, they've felt this surface to get it perfect, and it's theirs. It should and could never be simplified, could it? Well, it can't be automated. No. So I, I've been around your cars since the start. Uh, I've driven cars that are dynamically as exciting, maybe, at the outside. I've driven cars that nearly as beautiful, but I've never driven cars that have as good a paint finish. And we treat the whole car that way. And the idea is that it's exquisite craftsmanship through the entire car. But how is the paint finish so good? Is it just, do they just keep going at it? It's just a, it's a dedication of time. That's really what it is. There's no shortcut. I'm watch it. It's just gonna take as long as it takes. And as you said, great paint can only be applied to a great finished shell. If that's not right, this won't work. Once, that, once that's done, this is, this is a polishing and finishing area for the shells? Hours and hours and hours of surface polishing and finish. What about PPF? PPF is the latest thing. So the, the car is PPF. Can you, can you do them here? 
Uh, we do it. We do it in the far corner. So customers can have PPF applied by seeing. They it. do, and it's done with the car in pieces. Right. Okay. So it's not Don't after just... it's built. Yeah. It's on the on the, the on the yeah, and right. so it's very thorough. And the idea is that you can't see any breaks. You have to be told that it's there, and you're you're also applying it to a perfect finish, so it doesn't have as much of that. You know, sometimes PPF will take away from the finish, but you're applying it to something that's a that's a that's a mirror. So 11 years ago, when I came to see you, and Rob was there polishing the inside of a wheel rim before I went out, you didn't have your own hypercar that races in WEC no. with Jensen Button's name on the side of it. That's right. This is bizarre for me. It's ridiculous. Because I look at how far Singer's come, and, and I'm, I'm still doing the same thing, I'm just a bit fatter. Yeah. I've got more grey hair. Yeah, I know, but no, nothing really has improved for no. me. No, not for you. And what's that there? This is much better. Uh, that is our turbocharged, lightweight nutcase. I mean, it's... Uh, not that guy, that car. He's... It is quite a story. Can we go and see some stitching? Yes. When I first met you chaps on your journey, everything was outsourced. Yeah. That was really, just an assembly point, wasn't it, really? So it's everything in-house now? Everything. The entire process. And so staffing the business with people this talented is an, is an enormous amount of effort. We spend a lot of time really on the group of people who uh, not only are magnificently talented, they're, they're generally very, very sweet, very nice, dedicated folks. It also makes me understand why occasionally I've said to you, ooh, could you get your boys to just do a seat for me, for my car? You go, no, because they're flat out doing this. They are flat out. This is, uh, this is another area where it's going to take the time that it takes. Yeah. So it, if it, ta it takes months to do an interior, that's just it. That's what we do for a living. And I suppose there's one, there's one question I have to ask, and it's not meant to be difficult, right. but the more you do of it, the better you get at it, don't you? Of course. Yeah. Of course. You shouldn't be ashamed of that. I mean, our, our quality targets are unusually difficult yeah. for I guess I guess for a car, it's more like a like a wristwatch or something, right? Yeah, like yeah, a jewel. Yeah. Um, and it takes it takes practice. That's the new turbo sport seat. <laughs> this is what's going in that that white car. Oh, cloth as well. That looks really good. Yeah. This is the first one, and they will start to get in more and more shape over time. <gasps> There's some turbo seats. Kind of sit on that. Mm, it'll fall. It'll be funny if you fell. That looks fantastic, with, with the cloth inserts. It feels grown up, it feels like it's matured. It still doesn't feel like a car factory. Well, it's never gonna be, it. it's not a car factory. No. It's a reassembly of a very special thing. Yeah, yeah. And we treat it like a jewel. Yeah. Like we're building a, a, a wristwatch. It is. Not, not a, you know, a, 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 a refrigerator or something, yeah. just some tool that's gonna go out to the, to the client. It's very special, there's a lot of, there's a lot of- uh, it, it, it's still, But it still feels artisan. Yeah, it is. In the, in the UK, we call it cottage industry. Well, we've tried to remove the artisanship from where it didn't need to be. Okay. Right, where it's not really helpful in some areas. Um, and then we've really dialed up the craftsmanship. I mean, look I mean, at this. This is just ridiculous. We've dialed look up- Look at the quality of it. The craftsmanship where it matters. There's lots of people that are imitating the company that's reimagining an icon. Do you take that as a compliment? Yeah, I mean, what, what they don't understand is it takes this. Yeah. Yeah, it's a heavy lift. And if they do it, great. Yeah. Let's see them on the other side. Yeah. But it is, it's a, it's a mountain of consideration, work, and just talent. The amount of talent we have been able to attract at the business has allowed us to do this. It's, it's just the, the attention to detail is, is crazy for me. You need to see the turbo interior. Let's go and see a turbo interior. It's, be I mean, it's beautiful. And now there's, I mean, there's actually a proper printed panel as well. Yeah. I mean, the quality is ridiculous. I hope uh, people appreciate the quality. It's a continuous improvement, we call it. Okay. And it will continue to cycle and cycle and cycle through development to get it finer and finer and finer. I have to say, just feeling the fact that that's metal, what other car reimaginer would make that in metal? No one, would they? It'd be plastic. It would be plastic. Or printed, a lot of printed stuff these days. Yeah. But it doesn't feel the way it should. 
So you'll rub your hand up against this when you pull the strap. Would you ever admit how much that costs to make? Uh, not on camera. <laughs> <laughs> it's a door panel for crying out loud. And that's going onto this. Yes. Come see the inside. Okay. So poke your head in there. So you're looking at, uh, you know, this sort of a speaker tray, engine ECUs, that blue box right in the middle. Yeah. And, you know, the, the, the amount of engineering it took to get to a piece that's going to really have an exterior finish that we require. Um, and pre previously that was all just hand built, was it? It was just a hand formed maybe piece of aluminum that was covered in uh, sound deadening on one side, leather on the other. Uh, we've really stepped it up, sound quality, build quality, repeatability, um, all trying to get gaps and joints that, that are that absolutely That's incredibly perfect. accurate. The level of quality that we require is, is unusual for a car. I love the clock faces on this turbo. They look at those clock faces. They're mega. They're just gorgeous. When you see the footage of Goodwood, you'll see this car. We'll be going up the hill at Goodwood. I mean, I just get drawn into these carbon ceramic rotors, but there's a lot going on here. It's beautiful. Yeah, it's a CCMR rotor. Yeah. Um, so you'll find that on a on a Chiron. Yeah. Um, and then we've developed a special damper with the integrated front axle lift. Yeah. Um, as is required with these things. And when we arrived here, there were four weights, bags of sand hanging off that. Why? Because th we've taken so much weight out of the car that it's made it kind of more rear-engined. Yeah. So we need to weight the car like a Carrera GT that it doesn't <laughs> yeah, otherwise, fall off yeah, the Otherwise, back it weight. will do a static wheelie. Absolutely stunning. Casually, you find those on a Chiron. Do you think you'd ever say that? In 2013, do you think you'd say, you get that on a Chiron? Again, I can't stop looking at all the beautiful body shells and the colours. You do have some inventive, exciting customers, don't you? We do. There's not a huge rush to go super fast through here. It's really and it does about feel quality. quite calm. Yeah. It, yeah. The focus is on quality, execution, getting it perfect. It's not about getting it out fast. The one thing that is really apparent is protecting that beautiful coachwork when people are bolting stuff together. That seems to be really important. Miles of yellow tape. What's the yellow tape? It's, tape? it's probably half the budget, is the <laughs> tape though. No. Don't damage the car. Wait, wait, sorry, we've just casually walked past four of the most beautiful cars I've ever seen. The end result is still one of the most beautiful automotive objects I've ever seen. And it still looks like it did 11 years ago. It's still as exciting. It still makes me want to drive it. It's a car that makes you want to walk up, open the door, and have a look inside. So I will. I will. Okay, the seat's covered. Got a beautiful metallic green exterior. It's lighter than oak green, this, isn't it? It's a bit lighter. Yeah. And it's got a it's got a sort of Cohiba brown interior. I mean every time I come here, I just want one. They're stunning, Maz, they're stunning. They're still stunning. And actually, what you call classic, that's a chapter that's closing. How many more left to build? I think about 100, 125. And then, and then it's turbo. Then it's all turbo. I've never seen so many like this. You see, for you, it's normal. It's, it is hard to get used to. But they're unicorn cars. You know, you don't expect to see more than one or two in one place. What a it's journey. Fabulous to see you every day. What a journey. So here we go then, the first time anyone has seen the turbo on film, on road, and a little bit of sexy track work afterwards. I suppose time flies when you spend so much time around these beautiful motor cars. Porsche 911 reimagined by Singer in its turbocharged form. I first drove one of these in 2013, I think. So this is 11 years on. And there's already a, a heritage of these fantastic motor cars. Hundreds of happy owners, lots of happy journalists too, of which I am one. So what's turbocharging done? Well, it's a lot more than just turbocharging. This is a car of a very different personality. It's a lot more performance than the normally aspirated car, not DLS obviously, because that's really got a lot of performance, it's very light. But this is, it's potent and that boost builds. So what we've got here, for me, is more of a fast GT car. And that is just what the doctor ordered. But it's still 
alive and agile, perfectly suited to these beautiful canyon roads just north of Malibu, which incidentally is where we shot that first film all those years ago. And it properly gets going as well, much faster than the normal, normally aspirated car. This turbocharged engine really brings a lot more performance than the standard car. Boost builds from about two and a half, three thousand RPM, but it really keeps going. It's calibrated to keep going all the way, well beyond six. So hang in there, and it delivers. Very flat handling, very agile, huge amounts of grip. I mean, those wide rear tyres. I've just been full beans in first gear coming over hairpin. Not even a chirp. It's nicely geared as well. It's not too long, but it's a it's a kind of different personality. So. You want to get it into third gear and then just enjoy the turns, enjoy the steering, which is just, the steering laughs at modern cars. It's just gorgeous. You can feel the road conditions in front of you. I know I sound like a 1980s road tester. That's because I am one at heart. Oh, it's fantastic. Steering wheel bang on as well. As ever, Rob has got this driving environment just spot on. This engine. Okay, turbocharging always takes away a little bit of noise, but what you get is this elasticity, isn't it? The sense of the bungee rope. You come out of a corner and you go, whoa, it's still going. It just pulls you to the horizon. It shrinks the gaps between the corners. Those straight bits, it shrinks them. But I've still got a lovely noise. I've still got pure Porsche sound behind me. Yeah, and it's, it's powerful, it's fast. It is just a fabulous motor car. There you have it, the beautiful, fast and sophisticated Porsche 911 reimagined by Singer in its turbocharged form. I mean, it is, it, that is following me, isn't it? Within 18 days of meeting Maz and realising he hadn't turned up in our car park to buy a f car, he was just a, a nut job for these cars like, like I was. We were already imagining a turbo. If the F model is the early 911, which for many really isn't the pin-up 911, is it? It's an insider's 911 a little bit. It's an early 911, but the, you know, the 911 hit the mainstream. You could argue um, with the G model in 74, 75. And of course, the the, the big moment for the G model was the, was the turbo, and that was that was um, I had one on. I literally had a poster of the turbo on my on my bedroom wall. Did you ever own one or not? No, I remember I saw one in Norwich City Centre, outside a pub that my band used to play at. It was white. I was eleven, so it was like this must have been 65, 75, 76, 77 in Norwich City Centre. So it was an early turbo. And it just looked like a f wide spaceship. It just looked so unignorable. You just could not ignore it. It was just, the, and, 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 the, and it was just parked half up on the curb. And I just remember watching people's reaction to it. And it was like obscene. It was like obscene, these obscene big arches and stuff. And it was like no 911 I'd never seen. And I, I was reasonably familiar with the 911. 
and you know it just made its mark and it's like you know iconic is an overused word isn't it but it it it, it just represented this new era of, of porsche which was all about speed and rubber there was all this black rubber everywhere and there was no chrome on it and it was rubber and it was mid 70s and we'd come there was, out was there, was there we any were, chrome on the door surrounds there was it all the well first, i think the first, the first, first ones the first yeah. turbos yeah. had chrome door door mirrors it was and all thought. about rubber and what all this beautifully molded fabulously germanic bellows fabulous yes. bellows it was just like it just felt felt like a weapon in the world of the nerd the turbo front fender is a bit of a specialist object because the ST had already given us a load of extra width on the front, yeah. but it's a very different shape to a turbo front wing, isn't it? it? Is. If you stand and look at the front fender wing, we, I call it, we call it a wing in England, but a fender, not the, not the whale tail, but the actual thing that covers the front wheel, it's an extraordinarily great shape. We call it putting a bit of PSI under the skin, so you, 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 know, you massage the surfaces so they've got the right amount of bicep but they also have some sinew but it's very very respectful to an original turbo architecture yeah it's got quite a big face on the on the on the wheel arch different to an st and of course the st was the inspiration for me for the classic yeah. as, as we call it um you know a, mus a muscular 911 silhouette without any aerodynamic addenda that had this fabulous kind of confident stance we took a lot of time understanding the presence and the width of the classic, and we wanted to make the turbo. It's almost like you'd stuck, <laughs> you stuck your lips over the exhaust pipe and gone. <laughs> so it went <laughs> just, a, just a little bit. And we were talking earlier about, you know, turbo lag, and a lot of our, of our friends and customers who knew we were doing the turbo said, it's, gonna, it's gotta have turbo lag, right? And we were saying, well, yeah, I think so, but we can get rid of most of the turbo lag. No, no, it's got to have turbo lag. And you were saying today it needs to have some turbo yeah. lag, right? But, but it needs to feel authentically turbocharged, but in a good way. The personality of the turbo is interesting for me because the car is a bit of a thug. Yep. I mean, it's, it's not a blunt instrument. It's a blunt instrument. It's not this delicate thing where you, you know, you come back and... It's not a fingertip car. Right? Yeah, you, you wax lyrical about the delicacy of it. Really, it's about shortening the gap between the corners. It's, a, it's Patrick Bateman in a car, it's red braces. Today I definitely got that, it's a thug. It's got, it's got great, it's got the best steering you've ever done. Really fantastic. I mean, the, the, but the idea is that you, well, can, you can wield it. Yeah. So that it, it's, it's not something that's an immediately you know, foreign or out of no. balance. And because the, the original car, well, it wasn't particularly fast, I don't know why they considered it so fast, but it was out of balance. And anyone can throw a giant engine in something. If you inflate part that part of the car, you have to sort of inflate the, the, the rest of it. Yes. And it's an incredible exercise going through every single... Com you heard the story about the um, power steering. Yeah. So we re-geared the power steering. We re-geared the, the power steering rack to get more, you know, because we're going to have more tire, much more than the, the, those... Those components were well, designed for. The 930 never had power steering, did it? But you don't just re-gear it you know, willy-nilly. We went through 20 sets of gearing to get it to get the steering right, to get the steering right to hit the target. And, and it has to be a very complete exercise. It can't just be one one area of it. It's a little monster. It's a real monster, actually. It's got a personality all of its own. Because what what I think is has always been interesting is that the despite the gorgeous styling, mechanically, and the way they drive these cars have got a personality of their own, they really have. They're true to the original Porsche, but they add something in. But this feels completely different to anything you've done before, in, a, in a, quite a wild way. It's, a, it's yeah. really, it's fast car. Neil knows when I'm having to work, and I was working quite hard at times today, and a turbo should make you work. You sh if you, if I'd got in that thing and just gone, la di da di da fourth gear slide, you'd have failed. Because it should be a thug, it should be a bit spiteful. It shouldn't be, it shouldn't be horrible. It's, you know, it, what it is, it's got fantastic steering. It's got a front end you can trust. Back of the car Which has always there. been a problem. Yes, I know. But, but the back of the car has got so much mechanical grip, you're immediately secure. And actually, if you want to step beyond that, you are being what we call in the trade a t 
Well, you could also drive it across. Is that the, fair enough? Well, you no, no, you could drive it across the country. Yeah, yeah. So you have to have the, that range. Is that's a very difficult range to make something civil. It's 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 very easy to make a a track car or a boy racer hardcore bullshit loud thing to make something that feels like you could be in it for a week, but then also does that. It's not just the doing; it's the consideration of what the target is. What are you trying to accomplish, and how hard are you going to push everybody to that target? You've been out in it all day. What, what do you um? What do you think of it? It's completely different to what you've done before, which I love. It has a personality about it that grows over time. The best Porsches don't reveal themselves immediately. You know that? Mm -hmm. If you're getting them and they're one-dimensional, when you drive them for an hour and you've got it sussed, it's not a great Porsche. And I've got lo and there's more of them than, than I'd want to admit that just give themselves up too quickly. So this thing, it's quite complicated. Uh, you can't just get in it, grab it by the scruff and have it sorted in the first no, 10 minutes. You have to build up to you've it. Got, you've got to build up to it, which I love. Very, very fast, as in the turb anything turbocharged Porsche for some reason, you have to really, when you get in the car, you check your surroundings. You've got all your beautiful Rob interior, which is stunning. I love, there's lots of humor in the dials, which I think is wonderful. There's lots of theater. I think it's, it's, it's more than I expected as well.